I had a sneaky suspicion you were going to show up. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Monday. It is February 12th. Now, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to share some due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And I am particularly looking for ones that have potential to make us money. Now, normally when I find a hot penny stock, I'm looking at the charts. I can see heat in a chart rather easily, rather quickly. You can see a blue tsunami at the bottom. That's volume coming in. You can see the price cutting through a strong SMA. That's a breakout. And of course, we all know what going to the moon looks like. Well, when you see a chart that has heat, then take the time to rummage around through the company's press releases and filings looking for a catalyst. If you find a catalyst to match that hot chart, you've got the perfect mix for a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And I got one for you right now. This is Sierra Health Corps, ticker S-Y-R-A. Now, she had some huge, huge news come out on February 8th. So big that I had to verify it. I thought it was another misprint, but it wasn't. And the stock jumped huge. It went from $1.10 to $9.80 in one day, folks. We are talking over a 900% gain. Well, she has fallen back down. Currently, she's at roughly $3.10, and she's just under 6% gains. Now, this is a hot penny stock from the major exchange, which you've got to appreciate more than the OTC stocks. First off, they're safer to trade. Being on the major exchanges, there's a lot of monitoring going on, so these companies aren't going to get away with the same sort of BS they get away with on the OTC. Plus, there's no transaction fees. You get in for free, you get out for free. Plus, you can trade them pre-market, after-market. Don't overlook that, folks. This 900% gain I'm talking about, it happened pre-market. She ripped in less than an hour, 900%. So yeah, I like penny stocks on the major exchanges. Not to mention the major exchange has a heck of a lot more volume and a lot more money. Isn't that really where you want to be playing? So what is Sierra Health all about? Well, they tell us here Sierra Health is a healthcare consulting company with a mission to improve healthcare. The company aims to achieve its goal by becoming an asset to government authorities, payers, providers, life science organizations, and academic institutions by providing innovative services and technology solutions. The company's products and services address digital health, behavioral and mental health, population health management, health education, and healthcare workforce needs. So it's not like they're making medicines or even making equipment. They deal with technology. They've got a lot of platforms to use that information so that everybody involved has it when they need it. They also work with the workforce, bringing in people that have the expertise to help people. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's not bad. We got over a 100% increase going from 3.4 million to 7.7 .7 million today. Share structure for CIRA. Doesn't look bad from what I can see. Outstanding share count is just under 14 million. No clue what the float is, but it's never higher than the outstanding share count. So our float isn't going to be any higher than 14 million, which is pretty good, but it could be even less than that. Market cap for the company, $40.6 million. Taking a look at the financials. Now, overall, the financials don't look bad. But when you see the news that I'm going to share with you, you're going to understand why these are very small numbers right now. I anticipate a lot of zeros to be added on to the numbers we're seeing. Now, right now, they aren't bad. They've had a nice strong jump in revenues from 2021 to 2022, going from $1.4 million to $5.6 million. Now, I know that's millions and not thousands because they tell us right here, we've got to add three zeros to any of these numbers on any of these charts. And we are now expecting the next annual report for 2023 to come out any day. They are due. Quarterly reports. Well, they're making revenues on a regular basis, anywhere between $1 million and $2 million. And this last quarter, they did very well in the profit department. More profit than any other quarter over the last year. Take a look at that balance sheet. Well, they don't have much in the bank, about $18,000. Total assets isn't very high either, $2.6 million. Uh, liabilities are higher. 
3.8 million, which means currently we are holding a bag of 1.2 million for this company. Taking a look at the disclosures, we got a lot of good information over here. Now I am going all the way back to December. We've got three Form 4s here. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. And they can do that in a lot of different ways. But as investors, we're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them. These are all purchases, a lot of them. This first one here is from Alam Sandeep. That's the president and chair of the company. Look how many purchases he's made. Now, these are all on different days through November and December, but he's got lots of them here. Nothing major, no giant purchase, but lots of purchases. Well, that's the same thing you've got in this one. This is from Saeed Faraz. He is a 10% owner. He too has got lots of small purchases all through December, back to back to back. And that last one, this one isn't multiple, but again, it is a purchase, 426 shares. This is from the CEO. So all these big players inside management are buying shares right now. And then you've got new investors coming into the company. SC13G tells us about somebody who has bought enough shares. They are now part owner of the company. The new owner, SLS Group, they have just bought themselves 427,000 shares and they are now the proud owner of 7.6% of the company. So you can see a lot of excitement going on here right now. Insiders are pouring money into the company. Outsiders are coming into the company. And I'm sure it has a lot to do with that news because the news came out February 8th and all of this happened before that news came out. So let's take a look at that news now. So this is the big piece of news. Sierra Health announces partnership for a federal contract valued at $75 billion. <laughs> right? Of course I thought that was a misprint. So you dive into it, see if they print that a few other times, and they did. They tell us here that the company today announces it has been selected as a subcontractor for a contract awarded to Caduceus Healthcare by the Federal Department of Health and Human Services, the Administration for Families and Children, from the Office of Refugee and Resettlement, the medical staffing and support, all valued at $75 billion. Sierra Health will provide multiple services to the Georgia-based Caduceus Healthcare, which is the prime contractor in support of this multi-billion dollar federal influx care facility contract. The contract establishes a multiple award vehicle for providing temporary shelter, care facilities, direct care services, medical care, case management, education, and transportation in support of HHS's influx care facilities. Sierra Health announced the launch of its Federal Government Solutions Business Unit in December of 2023 to build upon its years of service in the state and local government sector. So Sierra's already been working with state and local governments. Now they're getting the, their foot in the door with federal governments. Big contracts, as you can see. Now, they are not the primary recipient of this $75 billion, but they are secondary. It is uh, the Georgia-based Caduceus Healthcare, which is the prime contractor. But right behind them is Sierra Health as the subcontractor. And they're the only two names I see here, folks. So whatever slice of pie they're getting from $75 billion, I am sure it's going to add a lot of zeros to their revenue. The other piece of news that came out here just today, I believe it was. Yes, and it is kind of the same sort of news, though they didn't say $75 billion. Sarah Health announces a healthcare workforce contract with Fairfax County, Virginia. The company announced today a healthcare workforce contract with the County of Fairfax, Virginia, where the company will staff licensed nurses to provide 24-hour nursing care. The company will also staff other temporary healthcare positions. Sierra Health currently has active contracts in 15 states across the nations. The contract announced today runs through June 30th, 2028, with the opportunity for an additional two years in renewals. 
So this probably isn't a giant contract, but it's more business folks. They're in 15 states doing whatever it is that they do, bringing in workforce, setting up their platforms. And now they are second in line for a huge chunk of $75 billion. Now, yes, the stock took a 900% run and she has come down, keeping about 300% of those gains. And now she's sitting perfectly looking like she's ready to take another rip. Let's go look at that chart. Whoa, what a rip. And we're going to chart that rip on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. We are looking at Sierra Health Core, ticker S-Y-R-A. I've got this opened up to a six-month, four-hour view, which just happens to be her entire chart. I discovered she came on the market September 29th, finished the day at roughly $3.50, and we currently are at $3.33. Now, from her coming on the market, she's been falling continuously until she had this little jump and bump at the beginning of January. I have no clue why. She went from about a buck to $2.25, came back down, hit this low in January of 81 cents, and then when the big news came out February 8th, she ripped, hitting this high of $9.80. Now, what really stands out to me on this chart is the lack of volume. There is no volume back here, just with these green bars and these green bars. But outside of that, there is nothing. We had a ton of volume come in on February 8th. And even though the volume has decreased these last couple of days, it is a lot more than we had before. So she took that big jump up, came down to the nine day SMA, dipped under the nine a little bit, jumped up on top of the nine, and that is where she is sitting right now. And I'm not too worried about that red bar because all of the SMAs underneath are turned up and pushing in the right direction. It's not hard, it's not fast, it's gradual, but it is going the right direction. What isn't going the right direction are our oscillators. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, our MACD and our RSI, all of them, not a lot, but all of them are gradually pushing down right now. So between the chart pushing up and the oscillator slightly pushing down, I get the feeling we're at that break point, the cusp, where things are about ready to change. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. <laughs> Doesn't look a whole lot different. Not a lot going on until February 8th when the big news came out and she ripped. Look at all of that volume. She took off, looks like it was all pre-market, came down, hit this nine-day SMA, and just climbed on it all day long. At the end of the day, she started to fall. The next day, she broke through the 20. After market, pre-market, she finally hit the 50, bounced off of that 50, and it looks like she is negotiating with that right now. Sure is. She is right there at 323, 333. So we are right there wrestling with it. And again, all of our SMAs are in a proper place. Our oscillators have gone flat. I mean, they are just flat right now. So you've got the four hour where they're dipping, the one hour where they're flat. Is the five minute going to show them up? Let's go take a look and see. So there's that big rip and it was all pre-market folks. She started that run at, uh, what is that? I can't tell, nine in the morning maybe? I think it's nine in the morning and she hit it at about 9.10, 9.15, she hit her high. So in like 15 minutes, she went 900%. Came back down and she had a lot of volatility through the day, but she did hit a second high of $8.40. I can see she fell before the bell. Look at that big drop. And then she continued dropping, went underneath the 200, got back up on top of it right here has bounced off at once, bounced off at twice, is now over the 20 on top of the nine on top of the 50. That's three out of four here. I don't like the 200 haul on top of her head, but I think after those two bounces right there and breaking all of these SMAs, she is probably going to try to start pushing. What do our oscillators say? Aha! Our PPO has just started to push up. Our MACD it's just gotten to the signal line, green bar is accumulating, and our RSI is starting to climb. 
S Y R A looks like she is ready to start climbing again, folks. And I don't know where she's going to go. I don't know how much money they're going to get. I don't know when they're going to get the money. I just know that is a huge catalyst, no matter how we slice it. So I think S Y R A belongs on your watch list. She may run in the next few days, but when she has another piece of news that gives us more details, I would expect another pop then. But hey, do some more due diligence. You know I didn't cover everything. And the more you know, the more you're going to grow. <laughs> See you, folks.